So I'm going to break with chronology here and begin our exploration of Rome with images of Pompeii, which means images from the early empire period. Then I'll backtrack and compare Republican culture and art to the early empire. The video clip offers a quick introduction to the eruption of Vesuvius. If you want to learn more, the video is up on Moodle. When I showed you the famous mask and coffin of King Tut, I mentioned that he was only a minor teenage pharaoh and that his temple probably only yielded what the Egyptians would have considered a second-class hall, and the loot still boggles our mind. The same is almost certainly true of Pompeii and its relationship to lost artifacts from ancient Rome. This city on the outskirts of Rome had prominent and wealthy citizens, but in the end it was really just a suburb. What makes the finds at Pompeii so incredible is the window they open to ordinary Roman life, families, homes, and the world revealed by the best preserved Roman paintings, paintings that ironically survived because they were buried in ash for almost a thousand years until they were unearthed in the 1800s. By the way, you'll need to know that these archaeological discoveries came in the 18th century. My husband and I visited Pompeii in May of 2013 and climbed to the top of Mount Vesuvius, which, fortunately for me, maybe not you, refrained from erupting. Okay, I usually try to avoid hyper-busy slides, but I thought all of these arrows and diagrams might prove helpful. The College Board plan of the House of Vetti does not include labels, so learn this stuff, okay? Let's take a visual tour of the House of Vetti. So here's the plan for the House of Vetti. This is the cheat sheet version with labels. Again, don't count on labels for the exam. So what that you just saw on a typical Roman house plan is missing from the House of the Vetti. There's no tablinum, no office where the patrons would meet clients. I looked hard, but I didn't see an explanation or even a theory about this. Let's see if we can come up with one. What do we know about the Vetti brothers? From plaques on the door, we know they were merchants, probably wine merchants. Here's a fresco from the House of Vetti, which shows cupids making wine. We know they were very successful freedmen, that is, former slaves who'd managed to get rich. This entryway fresco, not included with the College Board materials, shows the god Priapus, god of fertility, weighing his rather prominent attributes with money bags. Subtle it isn't. Another less than subtle hint were the two strong boxes placed prominently in the large atrium so that visitors would be sure to notice them. In other words, the Vetti brothers were social climbers. Roman society and Roman citizenship had become much more open to talent, but it's still unlikely that this duo, however wealthy, would be patrons to numerous clients. So maybe they didn't need an office, but they clearly decorated their home to impress. I'm pretty sure you only need to learn about the fourth style of Pompeian painting, which is the one that shows up in the House of the Vetti's famous Ixian Room, a required image. But since the fourth style was a mixture of earlier styles, let's go through the first three very quickly. First style used paint to imitate marble. Second style took illusionism a step further using architectural features and landscapes to, to create an illusion of depth and space. The third style moved away from illusionism to much flatter paintings with oddly thin and artificial architectural details. And finally, we arrive at the Ixian room of the House of the Vetti and a required College Board image. We don't know for certain what the room was used for, but the most common guess seems to be that it was a triclinium or dining room. Clearly, it was a place where the Vetti brothers entertained and showed off their wealth and taste. In this room, all the styles come together. We see faux or fake marble blocks along the base of the walls. That's first style. They frame the naturalistic and architectural scenes from second style with their illusion of depth. Yet these are combined with the large, flat planes of color and exaggeratedly slender architectural features we saw in the third style. So do you remember a word for taking a bit of everything from columns A, B, and C? Eclectic. Basically, the paintings in the Ixian room centered on two themes. One was romantic encounters between the gods and mortals. The College Board image set doesn't include any of these rather graphic paintings. It does include other mythological scenes depicting tales from Theban mythology. 
Remember that these were painted in the early Roman Empire. As you learned in, as you learned in your reading, Emperor Augustus deliberately tried to evoke classical Greece and the age of Pericles, and he set the style for the period. So Greek stories were fashionable, although the Greek gods apparently used their Roman names. So let's take a closer look at two of the paintings that show up in the College Board image of the Ixian Room. Here's a very abridged version of the story in this painting. Pentheus at the center opposed the cult of Dionysus, or Bacchus, which was very popular in his city of Thebes. So he was torn to pieces by women who were involved in the cult, including his own mother, uh, who joined in, their, in the merriment and in her madness and the frenzy of a Bacchic rite, did not recognize her own son. Charming dinner table viewing. So this one's a little less likely to spoil dinner. Hercules was the son of Jupiter and a mortal woman. He was born in Thebes. Juno, Jupiter's wife, was jealous of the child, so she put serpents into his cradle. As you see, Hercules succeeded in overpowering the snakes. Note that this painting includes architectural features that give it a sense of depth and framing that recalls early wall painting styles. We've already talked about the Alexander Mosaic. I just want to know here that it was found in a house in Pompeii. And just for fun, here is a mosaic from what was probably the exercise room of a 4th century CE villa in Sicily. This image shows up in a lot of local t-shirts. And here's my husband's photo of the entire panel. This is one of the most famous paintings from Pompeii. It shows a husband and wife. It may have been a marriage portrait. Ms. Jacobs and I both find this painting very evocative. These were real people, and chances are their fate was a tragic one. On to Roman history. 